So we're reading from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, and this is Madhya Leela, chapter 3, and I think it's verses 107, yes, to 114, and is that 114 is on the board? Yeah, okay. So now Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda have just taken prasadam at the house of Advaita Charya. And we read last week how there was a transcendental argument between Lord Chaitanya and, I mean, between Lord Nityananda and Advaita Charya. And now we're moving on to the Lord took prasadam and Lord Nityananda also. And now they're resting, and now it continues here. And then, of course, Lord Chaitanya instructed Advaita to take prasadam. And it says here, from verse number 107, Thereupon Advaita Charya took prasadam with Mukunda and Haridas, and they all wholeheartedly ate as much as they desired. Sometimes it says that the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Eat too much. But that's okay. <laughs> that's one of his special mercies, that his devotees like to eat a lot and dance a lot, sing a lot, and they do everything with a lot of energy, <laughs> including eating. <laughs> when the people of Shantipur heard that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying there, they all immediately came to see his lotus feet. Being very pleased, all the people loudly began to shout the holy name of the Lord. Hari! 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 Indeed, they became struck with wonder upon seeing the beauty of the Lord. They saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's very fair complexioned body and its bright luster which compared the brilliance of the sun. Over and above this was the beauty of the saffron garments that glittered upon his body. People came and went with great pleasure. There was no calculating how many people assembled there before the day was over. As soon as it was evening, Advaita Charya began the congregational chanting. He even began to dance himself, and the Lord saw the performance. When Advaita Charya began to dance, Nityananda began dancing behind him. Haridas Thakur, being very pleased, also began dancing behind him. Verse, today's verse. Acharya, Advaita Acharya said, My dear friends, what shall I say? Today I have received the highest transcendental pleasure. After many, many days, Lord Krishna is in my house. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. This is a song composed by Vidyapati. Sometimes the word Madhava is misunderstood to refer to Madhavendra Puri. Advaita Chari was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri, and consequently some people think he was referring to Madhavendra Puri by using the word Madhava. But actually this was not the fact. This song was composed to commemorate the separation of Krishna from Radharani during Krishna's absence in Mathura. It is thought that this song was sung by Srimati Radharani when Krishna returned. It is technically called Mathura Viraha. And Viraha means separation. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jena Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamma Yam Dadati Swapadanti Kam Jai Bande Hum Shri Guru Shri Yutapade Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavams Cha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahaganad Raganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate 
Gopesha, Gopika, Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namostute, Tapta Kanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrindavaneswari, Vishabhanu, Suti Devi, Pranamami, Hari Priye, Pancha, Kalpa, Tarubhisham, Kripa, Sindhu, Pebucha, Patita, Nam, Pavane, Bhyo, Vaishnave, Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasati Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, hmm, Phila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Noihi Anya. So Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna himself, but he is in the mood of Srimati Radharani, the very unique and rare, not rare, only one of a kind incarnation of the Lord. It's very mysterious incarnation because he worship he worships himself. <laughs> We shouldn't try that. <laughs> we, although we follow in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya, we avoid that part. <laughs> so he worships himself because he's not in the mood of himself, he's in the mood of his internal potency, Srimati Radharani, whose love is complete, perfect, and beyond description. And so wherever he is, because of that mood of Radharani, he's always glorifying Krishna. <laughs> she can only, Radharani can only always think of Krishna. She cannot, if someone told Radharani, don't think of Krishna, she would say, it's, that's impossible. <laughs> it's not possible. She can't not think of Krishna. And so she's always in that mood. So in that mood, Radha, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always in the mood of glorifying Krishna. And what was that glory, glorification, Kirtan? Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya always wanted an excuse to have Kirtan. <laughs> and he wanted his devotees always to take part in Kirtan. Because he, he came to give us the Yuga Dharma, which was Sri Harinam Kirtan. And Harinam Kirtan is the highest expression of transcendental uh, bhakti that one can possibly perform, especially in this age. One cannot glorify the Lord in any better and more appropriate and complete way than Sri Harinam Sankirtan. In other words, everything culminates in Harinam Sankirtan. The word kirtan comes from the etymological root word called kirti. Kirti means fame. And therefore, those who take part in kirtan are actually glorifying the all-famous Lord. But there's a second meaning, which is also quite, when we say sweet, uh, those who perform kirtan, they are also become famous. <laughs> In fact, when you perform kirtan, you don't know how many people are watching. Millions. The demigods are all looking down and throwing flowers when the kirtan's going on, when especially when it's prem sank prem sank kirtan, when kirtan is in the mood of love, then the, the demigods are there throwing flowers and also dancing in their in their heavenly realms. It says that when the devotees perform kirtan, uh, their feet when they touch the earth, the whole earth becomes joyful, just by the dancing of the devotees. And the whole world actually becomes, what we say, uh, full of unlimited happiness. This is the power of kirtan, because it's Mahaprabhu's internal mood of how to glorify himself in the mood of Srimati Radharani to perform kirtan. So therefore, there is no better way to please the Lord than performing kirtan. But there's different qualities of kirtan. There's Kali Kirtan, this Kirtan, that Kirtan. But real Kirtan means to try to glorify the Lord in such a way that others will be inspired to glorify the Lord also. 
Because kirtan is something, what we say, uh, you might use the word uh, all-pervading. In other words, it's meant for everybody. Everyone who takes part in kirtan actually becomes glorious and recognized by the Lord, especially Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And kirtan is two parts. It's chanting and dancing. Not chanting and sitting. <laughs> chanting and dancing. I was listening to Prabhupada talk the other day and talking on the like and he says, and yes, yes, we are performing this kirtan, kirtan and also we are dancing. And you should get also get up and dance. Even if you don't feel like it, dance anyway. <laughs> he said, when you don't feel like dancing and you start dancing, you automatically become happy simply by dancing. <laughs> In other words, you, you'll see that. Somebody is sitting down and then they get up and all of a sudden they're starting to smile and they're jumping this way and that way. Because the kirtan itself, or the dancing itself, is such a joyous expression that one automatically feels happy when they start dancing. Even if you don't know how to dance, it doesn't matter. <laughs> there was one devotee, what was his name? His name was Jagadananda Pandit. He danced like a duck, it said. <laughs> it just, I was reading that yesterday. And everybody would laugh at him. <laughs> he couldn't sing. He's such a bama in Krishna's Leela, but he's come at Jagordali Leela as... Uh, as uh, Jagadananda Pandit. And he had a lot of what we call feisty energy for Lord Chaitanya. Because you know Satyabhama, she tells Lord, she tells Krishna no. If he asks her something, she'll say, nope, not doing it. <laughs> Maybe you have some experience in that in your domestic life. <laughs> but anyway, so he, uh, yeah, so in that mood of Satyabhama, she's somewhat, you know, like contrary. She's a contrary devotee. There's devotees who are, who are always sweet and obedient to Krishna and those who are contrary to Krishna. Radharani's contrary. And when she manifests herself as Satyabhama, Satyabhama appears in Dwarka because when Radharani was in separation from Krishna in Vrindavan, and Krishna was not coming back, Krishna had said, I'm coming back. So that kept everyone with great hope that sooner or later Krishna was coming back. He went to Madhuri in order to take care of Kamsa and establish Ugrasena on the throne. He wanted to establish the political rule as a devotee, and Kamsa had taken over. So Krishna's mission was to remove Kamsa. So he had to leave Vrindavan. Apparently, Akurur came to take Krishna out of Vrindavan. When he did that, the gopis tried to stop Krishna from going. They, they fell in front of the chariot. <laughs> and they wouldn't move. Finally, Krishna was determined to go, so he, he, he drove the chariot around the gopis. But he left, and then the, go, the gopis just condemned Krishna, Akura. They called him Kura instead of Akrura. The word Akrua means not cruel. And Krua means cruel. So when he took Krishna out of Vrindavan, he, he got a, his name was slightly changed. <laughs> cruel. And so Krishna was said, but I'll be back. He gave some hope. And so everybody used to come to the edge of Vrindavan and they would look just to see in the evening time if Krishna was coming back. Because Krishna would do that when he was in Vrindavan. He would play with his cowherd boys and cows all day. And at the end of the day, he would bring the herd back and then and that would be the evening time. And then it would be time for the gopis. But the gopis would always come. And this time it was not only the gopis, the cowherd boys and Mother Yasoda and all the residents. They would go to the edge of Vrindavan looking at Krishna and never came back. So it is described in the Shastras that the gopis could not withstand that separation anymore so they decided to end their existence following Srimati Radharani and Lalita they all walked into the Jamuna over their head all the gopis apparently they gave up their physical bodies but they re-manifested themselves in Dwarka as the queens of Dwarka so that, that way they could get Krishna's association 
although it was a different loving expression it was it was more like dasyaras because married life is dasyaras it's not madhuryaras the queens are in the mood of servitor not in the mood of wife although they're in the, they they serve as a wife it's called dasyaras so what the, the gopis wanted so much for krishna's association that they were willing just to come and accept a lower mood of loving relationship just to be with Krishna. But when they were there, they were not satisfied. <laughs> they couldn't be satisfied. So Satyabhama was actually, you know, Radharani come again. And then that same Satyabhama appeared in Gorlila as Jagadananda Pandit. And Jagadananda Pandit he wanted to do so many things for, for Lord Chaitanya. He wanted to give Lord Chaitanya gifts. So he went to Jagannath Puri and came back with this beautiful pot. And inside it was the most precious sandalwood oil. Sandalwood oil was under the control of the government. You couldn't get it. Even today, to some degree, it's still under government restrictions. He got this best of all sandalwood oil. And now he wants to offer it to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is a sannyasi. And so he gives it to Sarup Damara Goswami. Lord Chaitanya is a personal servant. And Sarup Damara Goswami knows that Lord Chaitanya is not going to be so happy, but he wants to please Jagadananda Pandit, so he just leaves it up to Lord Chaitanya. So he he said, this is from Jaga. He used to call him Jaga. And he said, what is this? Oh, it's sandalwood, very fragrant sandalwood oil. Lord Chaitanya said, if I put that on, people think, what kind of sannyasi is this? He smells so nice. He's bogus, you know. I mean, we're supposed to smell nice, but not like that. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya Said you know, he gave it back to to uh, to uh, Subdhamara Goswami and said, you know, tell him to take it and bring it to Lord Jagannath in Puri and give it to the Pavanjaris and they can smear it on the body of Lord Jagannath and that will be a good use. So he does. He goes back, gives it to Jagadananda Pandit and tells what Lord Chaitanya says. Jagadananda Pandit takes the the whole pot and smashes it on the rock. And now he's angry. He goes in his room, shuts the door, he's not talking to anybody. <laughs> this is love. <laughs> this is one of the features of love anyway. <laughs> and so <laughs> he comes back and tells uh, Lord Chaitanya. The Lord Chaitanya is a little nervous because he, he doesn't want Jagadananda Pandit to be angry. And he knows when Jagadananda Pandit gets angry and he locks himself away, you know, he doesn't come out. He stays in that mood for a long time. <laughs> so, Lord Chaitanya, and then later on, this is also fits into it, Jagadananda Pandit gave another present to Lord Chaitanya. It was a bed. Not for sannyasis. Supposed to sleep on the floor, hard floor. The more it hurts, the more you're comfortable. Supposedly, anyway. When you get old, it's a little hard. But So he makes a bed for Lord Chaitanya and gives it to Sarup Damanar. He says, give this to Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya, Sarup Damanar says, oh no, and here we go again. <laughs> so he gives it to Lord Chaitanya. So now Lord Chaitanya says, now he wants me to enjoy sense gratification. <laughs> but now he, after the incident with the, with the oil, he's thinking, you know, what can I do? <laughs> like, you know, he might really not talk to me ever again. <laughs> and he's fasting too, because he's angry. So, uh, Srup Dhamadar is smart. It's good to have a nice personal servant who <laughs> uses some of it. So he takes the bed and takes it all apart and just leaves a little bit of the, the threads. And then Lord Chaitanya said, that's perfect. So there was a little mat left. And then he came back and Jagadananda Pandit asked, 
Did he like the bed? Oh, yes, yes, it was very nice. <laughs> I was with one senior devotee one time, and we were at one temple in America. So we were there overnight. So the next night there was a bed there that was not there the night before. It was a present for the other devotee who I was with. It was also sannyasi. And uh, he looked at me and said, you know, if I sleep on that, I'll forget the goal of life. <laughs> so I got an understanding what it meant, what beds actually mean. <laughs> so, but the lady who gave it to him, she was like another Satyabhama. <laughs> so he was thinking what to do, you know. <laughs> he wouldn't know what the reaction was. So somehow or other he... He said, thank you very much. We'll definitely use it. And we did. We sat on it. That was it. <laughs> but that was all we did. So, yeah, so Lord Chaitanya was very, very, very strict as a sannyasi. Extremely strict. He followed the principles of sannyas very, very rigidly. And his devotees couldn't take that. They couldn't take that because they knew he was the Supreme Lord and they wanted to offer some something nice because that's the idea. The Supreme Lord should get the best of everything. But Lord Chaitanya's mood was stopping that. So they would always think, you know, what what can we do? Maybe sneak something in or give... And they would make something... They would cook for him sometimes. One time... They would cook for him and they would give it to Govinda. Govinda was another one, a personal servant of Lord Chaitanya. And when they would bring it, Lord Chaitanya would say, put it in a room over there. And then someone else would come and they put it in a room over there. So after one month, the prasadam coming for Lord Chaitanya, Govinda came and said, my dear Lord, you know, they're asking me how you like the prashadam. I, what am I supposed to tell them? <laughs> I keep telling him, you know, sooner or later he'll, he'll take it. But now, what should, I, what should I tell him? And Govinda and Lord Chaitanya said, give up your anxiety. Just bring it all. And so there was, the room was full. And Lord Chaitanya ate it all. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> and one thing he wasn't so strict about... <laughs> What it was is because he is Vishwambar. Vishwambar means one who can consume the whole universe. And so, you know, he's, he's the supreme personality of Godhead. But in the mood of a sannyasi, he keeps that rigid, you know, following of the principles. So then Govinda came back and told all the, the different persons who had cooked, especially Raghava Pandit and his wife Damianti. They used to cook so nice, so nice. And so they were all happy like that. So just to please the devotees, sometimes the Lord would, you know, go beyond the principles just to please the devotees. But it was difficult. Now Jagadananda Pandit is really angry. He's in the room. He's not talking. So Lord Chaitanya is thinking. It's three days he's fasting. And Lord Chaitanya is thinking what I have to do. So he goes to the door of the house where Jagadananda Pandit is staying. Jai Sri Sri Radha Gokulananda Ki Jai Sita Ram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai Sri Sri Gornitai Ki Jai And he knocks on the door. He says, hey, Jaga, Jagi, not Jagi, Jaga, <laughs> he calls him Jaga. <laughs> Uh, it's me. Uh, I'm hungry. Can you cook for me? <laughs> so Jagannath Pandit opens the door. He's still got an angry look on his face. And Lord Chaitanya walks in, sits down. He goes in the kitchen. He starts cooking. And he's cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking. And so Lord Chaitanya is there waiting. Finally, he comes out with this grand feast. And then uh, Lord Chaitanya looks at it and says, you know, this is too much. <laughs> Jagadananda Pandit says, what are you talking about? You know, 
Every day you have 56 offerings in Jagannath Puri you're eating. This is, this is just like a morsel. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya doesn't want to get him any more angry. So he starts eating. And he's eating and eating. And he says, you know, Jagadananda, you cook very nice when you're angry. <laughs> because, you know, when you cook, whatever mood you have goes into the prasad. You know, I can tell sometimes. Every day I get a different lunch. <laughs> and I get different, you know, people. I remember Indrajuna Maharaj was telling us one time that one time one of his disciples was cooking for him. And after he was done, he came to her and said, are you listening to the Beatles? She said, how did you know? <laughs> I can taste it in the food. <laughs> because he, he was hearing Beatles songs when he was eating the prashadam. <laughs> so when we cook, we put our consciousness into the cook. And that's why it's very important that always one is very in a proper consciousness. Because it gets offered to the Lord and then ultimately to the devotees. That's one of the most important services in our society because it is a direct way to please the Lord or serve the Lord and at the same time to please the devotees. So when that's done in a very proper consciousness, then that prasadam is the best of all prasadam. Even if it's not prepared nicely for whatever reason, still because it's in the right mood. There was one devotee, she was cooking for Srila Prabhupada. And uh, Prabhupada liked hot chapatis. He liked hot chapatis. So the devotees were running from the kitchen to where Prabhupada was sitting. It was in a different floor that they had to run upstairs and, and then run down and bring it to chapati. So they were running back and forth. And she was so in a hurry to get Prabhupada chapati, she was burning him. She had these grill, and it was, the grill was putting holes in the chapati. And Prabhupada was eating one after another. It wasn't, it wasn't, the quality of the prasadam obviously wasn't there, but Prabhupada was tasting the bhakti. Sometimes you, you, we see that, and sometimes people ask me, how do you like the prasadam I cooked? I said, you know, I kind of hesitate to tell the truth, you know. <laughs> so... I say, you got a lot of bhakti. <laughs> I can really taste it. Thank you very much. No, how do you like the prasad? The bhakti was great. <laughs> so, and that's the main ingredient, obviously. But it's nice to put both of them together. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Lord Chaitanya, one of his main activities in association with his devotees was, was taking prasadam. And said so that when Lord Chaitanya took prasadam, you know, he could eat five times as much as anybody. And sometimes he would serve, and he would like to serve the devotees. So one time during the Panihati festival, at the end, they had a big feast, and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were there. So Lord Chaitanya wanted to serve all the devotees. So all the devotees were were sitting down. The Lord made everyone sit down so that he could serve. And he would serve, and he'd use his hands to serve. And it says that every time he gave a handful of food... Now, Lord Chaitanya was big. He was about two meters tall. He was really... He wasn't a small guy. The altar is a little shorter, but <laughs> but that's just just so he can fit. <laughs> but his actual size is quite big, so when using his hands, he said every time he fed someone, that was enough for five people with one scoop, you know. <laughs> and they were thinking, ah, oh. <laughs> and if we don't eat it all, he's not going to be happy. <laughs> So they would eat it, and then sometimes they would just roll on the ground. <laughs> there were many, many devotees in Iskon used to really try to come up to that standard of. <laughs> in the old days, we we used to when we would have take prasadam it was like who could eat the most. <laughs> We had these Glubjaman eating contests. Did you, did you ever hear about those? Yeah, they were pretty wild. 
There was one in St. Louis, Missouri. There was a big competition between some of the senior devotees. And these were not these little tiny gloved ones. The regular big size ones that looked the same size as the, the Rasgulas. So we had... So there was a good competition between Bhakti Tirta Swami and one other devotee. And so they were tied at 84 Glubjamins at apiece. Oh. <laughs> then he went up to 86. So Bhakti Tirta Swami quit at 86. He couldn't take it. You know how much sugar that is? <laughs> Whoa. So, but this other devotee thought, I'm going to win. So he took 87. And then he wanted to make a point, not just beat him by one. He went to 88. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> Everything came back up. <laughs> so he lost by default. <laughs> so Maharaj got the, got the crown. He was considered the winner by default. <laughs> So, yeah, this was the old days. And if you read uh, Servant of the Serpent by Tamal Krishna Goswami, have you read that book? Servant of the Servant. There's a big prasadam eating contest in there between the, the, the uh, Radha Damodar party head by Tamal Krishna Goswami and Giriraj Maharaj and uh, the devotees at uh, the, what was it? What was the name of that temple? Anyway, this is in Florida. I can't think of the name of the temple. But it was headed by Amarendra. Amarendra was the temple president. And they had a challenge. Amarendra said, we can cook more prasadam than you could eat. Kamal Krishna Goswami said, our men can eat more prasadam than you can cook. <laughs> You read about it, it's about five five or six pages long describing this whole battle. And so uh, it goes on and on and on. Each person had five plates. <laughs> and Armorender's men just kept coming up with so many, like, pizzas and pakoras and what else? Uh, Kachoris and poris and subjis and different kinds of rice and they were just and then you know Tamal Krishna was saying, "Come on, we got to beat these guys. We got to make sure we can eat more than they can cook." But guess who won? <laughs> the cooks. <laughs> the devotees were, couldn't move after that. I don't know if they did sankirtan for a while after that either. So. So that's a nice, it's, it's really a kind of a sweet battle. You, if you read it, the pastime is really, really sweet. So this is all in the mood of Lord Chaitanya's movement. Chanting, dancing, and feasting, like that. But if you're feasting and you're not chanting and dancing, it's not going to work. <laughs> you have to chant and dance too. Even if you don't know how to dance, get up and dance anyway, because it's so fun to dance. It says that, you know, during Lord Chaitanya's Gorarti, there were some persons that were there, they couldn't dance for whatever reason, but they danced in their heart and danced in their mind, and so they were actually taking part in the dancing. So unless you're actually, you know, like an invalid, it's good to dance because when you dance, you inspire so many other people to dance. So that's our movement, chanting and dancing. And you know, a lot of times when you dance, you start feeling the energy in your body. It starts coming back. And the older you get, the more you should dance because the things get creaky when you get old. You know, all the parts are kind of getting rusty. So you want to keep them oiled up by moving around. It's good. Actually, the older you get, the more exercise you need. Otherwise, you go down fast. So dancing, but probably when someone asked Prabhupada, there's that one verse in the Bhagavad Gita where it says that one should be temperate, moderate in eating, sleeping, working, and recreation. Yoga, yoga shema vahami yaham. So one devotee asked Prabhupada, well, what is recreation? Prabhupada said dancing. <laughs> dance. 
<laughs> and Prabhupada, one time Prabhupada danced the whole Ratha Yatra. This was in San Francisco, 1974, I think it was, or yeah, maybe it was even earlier than that. The whole Ratha Yatra for miles, Prabhupada danced. I mean, not just walked like this, he was actually dancing the whole Ratha Yatra. Prabhupada was so happy that he had a able to achieve Ratha Yatra in San Francisco. Prabhupada was expressing his happiness. And there was the deities on the cart, and Prabhupada was, was just inspiring the devotees to dance and dance and dance. And sometimes, it was one time where the, the police were getting a little upset because the devotees were dancing and it was going outside of the, the restricted area. So they kept telling the devotees to go back in. But because Prabhupada was dancing, everybody else was dancing. <laughs> and everybody was watching Prabhupada and dancing with Prabhupada. So the police said, well, you know, you guys have to either, you know, go in there or we're going to have to do something. So tell your, tell your leader, because they could see Prabhupada, tell your leader that, you know, to come, you know, but nobody would go up to Prabhupada and say anything. Because <laughs> Prabhupada was like, you know, just dancing and dancing and dancing. So, and, and the police actually gave up. <laughs> I think this was in New York. Yeah, after a while they gave up. So Prabhupada was so animated in his dancing that everybody was so inspired by Srila Prabhupada. And he would do that. And Prabhupada was like, I mean, his health was not good. But Prabhupada would, sometimes when he would just dance and, and no one could think. And sometimes they would think, they would see Prabhupada leaping straight up in the air. He would be jumping. And the devotees would start jumping with Prabhupada and Prabhupada kept jumping. <laughs> this is Prabhupada. So Prabhupada is teaching us that this is, the, this is our movement, chanting, dancing. And Lord Chaitanya is... Appearance Day is coming up, so there's no better way to honor Lord Chaitanya than to perform Harinam Sankirtan, because this is why he came in order to inspire us. I was just thinking the other day, this is just some conjecture on my part, that if every devotee in the world got out on Harinam Sankirtan at the same day, at the same time, what would happen to the rest of the world? Probably be Vaikuntha be amazing, right? This kirtan all around the world, everywhere, in every city, and every, and even in the towns and villages where their devotees are, that, I mean, that would really accelerate the whole process of Lord Chaitanya's movement. Because that's where the power lies in Harinam Sankirtan. Because when you're chanting and dancing, you are not part of this world. <laughs> And when you're absorbed in that chanting and dancing, you are not part of this world. There's a, there's some kirtan ears. Prabhupada told us this story many years ago, that they dance in kirtan in a, def, in a defiant way. They put their hands on their waist and they look down at the ground in a defiant way and dance. And what they're doing is making an indication, maya, Try and touch me. Come on. <laughs> in other words, Prabhupada, when you're in kirtan, that material energy can't get in. It's, it's like powerful. It's really powerful. So this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. So at the house of Advaita Acharya, whenever they were there together with all the associates, they would always have kirtan for one full month every night. For at least three hours, they would have kirtan. I can read you a nice verse. I think it's in this book. Let me see if I can remember what it is. Madhya Leela 2 verses. Let me think if I can find that verse. I think it's in this chapter. Verses. It's a beautiful verse. Two oh three, verse two oh three. I think this is it. Okay. Hmm. Here you go. This is verse two oh three in the same chapter. 
the verse says, in this way, all the opulences of Advaita Charya, his faith, devotion, home, riches, and everything else were successfully utilized in the worship of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada's purport. Advaita Acharya set an ideal example for all household devotees in the receptions of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees and in the execution of a daily festival at his home. Prabhupada goes on, if one has the proper means and wealth, he should occasionally invite the devotees of Lord Chaitanya who engage in preaching all over the world and hold a festival at home simply by distributing prasadam and talking about Krishna during the day and holding congregational chanting for at least three hours in the evening. Now here's the sentence. This procedure must be adopted in all our centers of the Krishna consciousness movement. Thus, they will daily perform Sankirtan Yajna. And Prabhupada goes on to glorify it. One should worship Lord Chaitanya and his four associates, the Panchatattva, by distributing prasadam and holding congregational chanting. Indeed, that sacrifice is recommended in this, in this age, most recommended in this age. In this age, other yagyas are not possible to perform, but this yagya can be performed anywhere and everywhere without difficulty. Hmm. So yeah, Prabhupada writes, we should have kirtan every night for three hours in all of our centers around the world. <laughs> yeah, so there's many stories. One time Prabhupada was in India, and there was a beautiful kirtan group, and they were chanting so nicely. Prabhupada loved them so much. that Prabhupada said to the devotees, we should do this all day, every day. This was in Vrindavan. <laughs> and the devotees thought, oh no, how are we going to do that? We got, you know. So they went back to Prabhupada and said, it's not possible. Prabhupada said, all right, well then do it once a week on Sunday every day for the whole day. So Prabhupada actually started this whole idea of Kirtan Mela. He wanted the devotees one day a week for the whole day just chat. That's all. <laughs> and you'll see, the more you have Kirtan, the more you distribute prasadam, the more you discuss Krishna consciousness, all your problems are gone. There's no problems. <laughs> And you might even think, oh, gee, I had a problem. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> you know, this is the power of Lord Chaitanya's mercy coming through the form of Harinam Sankirtan. So we are blessed with something. Goloka Premadan Harinam Sankirtan. This is coming straightly from the spiritual world into the material world into the hearts of the pure devotees. The pure devotees are distributing that mercy and those who accept that mercy become happy and and joyful and they develop love for Krishna. This is the process. Okay, so and we're all preparing for the appearance of Mahaprabhu which will be in about two weeks, right? It's coming up. So it's good to talk more and more about Lord Chaitanya, about his movement to prepare our minds and hearts for the up-and-coming festival. Gorpur Nima is actually the new year for the Vaishnavas. It's actually the new year for the Vaishnavas. We have the we have January 1st, that's a new year. We have Vashan Panchami, that's a new year. But then for the Vaishnavas, it's actually Gorpur Nima. And Gorpur Nima for the Vaishnavas are because we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we're followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We put more emphasis on Lord Chaitanya than we do on Krishna. <laughs> Why is that? Because only by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya can we actually approach Krishna. <laughs> it says when you get the mercy of your spiritual master, then you get the mercy of Lord Nityananda. When getting the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you get the mercy of Krishna. When you get the mercy of Krishna, then you get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I mean. Then from the mercy of Mahaprabhu, you get the mercy of Srimati Radharani, and then Krishna's there. So it's it's gradual. It starts with pleasing the spiritual master. And what does Prabhupada say? The most important service, the most important thing that we can do is chant Hare Krishna. 
of his editor. Is there any problems? Just chant Hare Krishna. He writes in one thing, he said, sometimes we get overwhelmed by some difficulty. Our enthusiasm is destroyed. He uses an example. You drop something into a pool of water and you're trying to find it, but it's down at the bottom and you can't find it. So if you shake up the water, you can't see where the, where the item you're looking for is because the water becomes, what we say, uh, unclear. He says, if you sit down and wait after some time, and he said, sit down and chant, and after some time, everything will be nice. Like that. So whatever you have, when you have problems, chant. <laughs> We're trying to solve our problems. That's good. That should be done. But here is the antidote for all. As Prabhupada said, it's the panacea for all ills in this age. Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Chant always, chant more. Like that. And that's the process, because... Prabhupada actually told one devotee that the actual process of Krishna consciousness is 10, 24 hours a day. So if we can come to 12 hours a day, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, any questions or comments? And anything related?